Hello, welcome to my channel. If this is your first video, then please ignore what's going on behind me. I'm currently redecorating, so we've got like an old headboard, a half painted wall, it's a whole thing. Quite recently, I decided to get tear trough fillers and I thought I would do a video about the process and the results because it was something I was trying to research quite a lot beforehand and I feel like there's not as many things out there about tear trough fillers probably because it's quite a sort of specific problem that only really affects people with a certain eye shape and whatever so I thought maybe I would try and contribute and give another resource to be out there for people who were looking into it. Put it in context, I have always had deep tear troughs. Even if I look at pictures of me as a child, you can see them in my face shape. So it is just a structural part of my face shape that I have very, very deep tear troughs. Nothing to do with lack of sleep. It's not something I can conceal away because it's the physical shape. It is what it is kind of thing. For years and years and years, I went after every new concealer that was on the market. You know, I tried every eye cream. Like, I think I genuinely thought something cosmetic was going to be able to change my eye shape, which was never going to happen. But again, because tear tall fillers are not a very commonly talked about filler, it wasn't really until in the last couple of years that I've really discovered that's something you can do and that would actually change my eye shape to an extent. I turned 30 in July and I just feel particularly in the last couple of years my tear troughs went from being something I was aware of to being like the focus of every time I looked at a picture of myself I was staring right at my under eyes. There was probably a, a sort of natural coinciding with the fact I was turning 30 and they do generally say that is when you know you really see the sort of aging process begin to accelerate in your skin so I do think that was part of it and then also just the last two years have been what they have been globally we've all been processing things that our brains are probably not equipped to process it's been a very very stressful and worrisome time so that probably also hasn't helped anything um physically in your body you know they say stress is not good for you so we'll see the results of that in a few years i imagine but yeah i just kind of got to a point where i was like no i've i need to do something about this so the way that i'm going to structure this video will all be time stamped down below so i've done a before where i'm talking to you just directly before i go for the procedure i have also filmed the during i filmed the actual procedure like in real time so that you guys can watch it if you are so inclined. You can see exactly how long it took. Um, it's a very quick procedure, but you can watch exactly how long it took, exactly what happened. Then I've done a sort of immediate after check-in, two-week check-in and a three-week check-in, and then I'm going to do a general discussion at the end about my treatment, how I felt about it, etc. So if you want to click to different bits of the video, they will be timestamped down below, but otherwise you can just watch it through if you're interested. Hey guys, so you're getting me makeup free, hair back, the full shebang today because I am getting tear trough fillers today. So I want to go with absolutely no makeup on so that she can fully see what she's working with. I am a bit nervous. I think like the most sort of advanced thing that I've had is like laser hair treatment or like a dermabrasion facial. Like I've never gone into the world of injectables or anything like that in terms of filler. I am quite nervous, but I'm very excited. So to give you the before, God, we're, we're really getting up close and personal. So I am super pale, so pigmentation does come through in my skin. Um, so you can see my face is like a lot more red than my neck, for example. I have just, I've done my skincare and I do use vitamin Z, so I feel like that makes it, although I do take that down my neck as well. But yeah, whenever I've just been touching my face to do my skincare, it definitely gets more red anyway. So I do have very sensitive reactive skin. Um, but it's very very pale so pigmentation does come through with it so I do have dark under eyes and there's kind of no two ways about that but I feel like I know how to colour correct my under eyes but half of the problem and I do think it's a combination of things I've kind of always stayed away from talking about this because I feel like don't feed the trolls, do you know what I mean? Don't give them the things that you're conscious about so that they don't prey on them. But I feel like the bridge of my nose is quite prominent. I do think I maybe broke my nose when I was younger. 
I had an accident, like, I won't give you the graphic details. It was really bad, but we thought all the trauma was to my mouth. And I, I think what's happened is that actually my nose was broken at the same time that I hit my mouth. Um, like, I had teeth removed, it was, was not pretty. Um, when I was very, very young, and I think I've broken my nose at the same time, so my nose is a bit not right for my face. That's obviously a very, very expensive fix, so we'll not be doing that anytime soon, if ever. I'm kind of used to it, but I do think that's part of the problem. I think my nose is quite prominent, which casts like a shadow physically here but I also think just this actual shape like my under eyes are sunken you know this goes in like if I hold that back there like you can kind of see this line here and here that's not colour it kind of matches up with where the discoloration is or where the dark colour from my under eye circles are but it's not actually colour it's physical shape like, see if I smile, you can kind of see that a bit more. And it becomes quite dramatic, so I feel like it really puts me off smiling widely in photos. Um, because I feel like I can colour correct the under eyes, like, I don't actually think that's the issue. I think it is the shape of them. And as I say, I do think it works in tandem with my nose being a bit more prominent than would be ideal, so... I do think there's two things at play, but I have high hopes, but this is the before. I was going to do like a, a kind of formal before and show you me, me like colour correcting my under eye and what it looks like without that, but as you can maybe tell from the fact that there's a ladder behind me, uh, we're, we're at another stage in the redecoration process, so there's really nowhere for me to film at the moment. But yeah, you've seen me do like get ready with me's and you know, you've seen me filming with my makeup on. So you guys know what my under eyes look like when they are colour corrected. I will put in some pictures just to demonstrate as well um, that even with concealer, the shape obviously doesn't change. I feel like I know how to change the colour, but there's not much I can do about the shape cosmetically. So in terms of with makeup, when I say cosmetically, I mean with use of cosmetics. Um, but I can cosmetically, hopefully, change it with filler. So that's what we're off to do today and I'm going to take you along. So I do just want to put a little warning in that this section is exactly what it says in the tin. It is the procedure happening in real time. So there are injections, there is blood. If you're not going to be good with that, skip over this. I do think in general if you're not actually good with like injections or needles or blood you could still have this procedure because you're you have to look up the way whilst it's happening and um, so you actually you feel what's happening but you don't see it you could quite easily have this procedure you know and if you're not videoing it uh, you wouldn't see any needles you wouldn't see any blood so I do think it's actually quite a good one from that point of view if that's something that bothers you it's not something you need to be looking at as it happens kind of thing but yeah this section of the video is real time as the treatment happens so you do see all of that so skip it if that's going to make you squeamish. I'm just going to do a wee injection in your cheek okay?
Just get my other arm a work out there. The good distraction technique. Can you see the difference on the camera? You can actually, yeah. There's a wee, yeah. still a wee mm -hmm. deficit, but that'll improve over the next mm -hmm. three weeks. Right, so we'll just do the injection on this cheek. Hey guys, so this is the immediately after. I'm just home from having my treatment. It's now dark outside so I can't recreate exactly the before lighting that I had because I was filming in front of the window with light coming in. Um, but I'm in my kitchen and to be fair, this is now that sort of overhead lighting that should be deeply unflattering and actually bring out my tear troughs. Um, so seeing a way, I feel like you can see how much of a difference that has made already a close up on my left eye and on my right here's an ungodly unflattering angle and here's more like the context of my face so she did say you need to wait three weeks for the sort of full effect in terms of swelling to go down and it to sort of find its place with it. so this is obviously just directly after so this is not the full result and there might be a bit of swelling and whatever what she did say is that it might actually look worse before it looks better because basically filler it's like hyaluronic acid so water in your body it like attracts water and holds it so it can sometimes go a bit bumpy um so we'll see if that happens or not i will keep you informed at kind of all stages but i honestly feel like it looks so much better already i'm going to put in i put a picture like i took a picture of me waiting on the train in and a picture of me on the train home so it was like in unflattering train lighting and I just I can't believe the difference already I feel like I look so much more awake so much less tired there is definitely still discoloration there but we knew that like I knew this wasn't going to fix the discoloration so I feel like I'm going to be so excited when I do first do the color correcting job on this and see what it looks like only thing I would say and I feel like this hasn't come up in any videos I watched about under eye filler so I am a full-time glasses wearer and actually I think that's one of the things that might have made my tear troughs worse is because I feel like my glasses sit there so I took my glasses along to my appointment I've got contacts in today so she was fully able to administer the appointment with contact lenses in I showed her my glasses and she looked at where my glasses are resting and said I'm absolutely fine to switch between glasses and contact lenses as I wish for the next couple of weeks. But if you are a glasses wearer, you are maybe better to have your contact lenses in when getting the treatment, just so that if you are swollen or tender after, which I'm not at all, but in terms of like tender or anything, it's not sore. But it might just be a, an idea to wear your contacts whilst you're getting the treatment so that you're not putting your glasses directly on top of it right after. If you are going to be swollen or tender, take your glasses along to your appointment regardless and have the doctor or the nurse 
have a look at the the glasses on your face shape so that they can give you that feedback. Oh, and the other thing is that I have to drink water, not Diet Coke, water for the next three weeks. So I'm going to have to try and be good. I should be drinking more water and less Diet Coke anyway. We always know that. I always say that. But yeah, I am super, super pleased. This is just a quick check. Just my sort of immediately after check-in. I already feel it's made such a difference. I'm so pleased and I will see you in my next check-in. So I have put makeup on for the first time since Sunday. It is now Thursday, so we're not even out of the first week, never mind at the three week mark in terms of final results. But I am in deeply unflattering lighting right now. It is dark outside, I've got an overhead light, so I've got no natural light coming in to balance my face. I've got overhead light, which in the past would have always made my under eyes well it's still emphasizing my under eyes like this is is them emphasized because the light's coming down and it's kind of catching in them because there is still to some extent a trough there like you should say i had very deep troughs to start with so it's not erased them totally and it's obviously it's not changed my eye shape altogether beyond recognition um but it just looks so much better like like honestly if i'd been trying to film in this lighting setup beforehand like I would have just looked like a skull like that was the thing that was really getting to me is because I do make YouTube videos as well like I was always so conscious of being like oh no can't film there like my eyes are so bad like I would have never been able to film here before and then it's still not a super flattering setup it's not the ideal place to film it's not the ideal lighting to film in but honestly like I cannot believe those are my under eyes I know that is it's such a random statement and it's such a specific strange area of your face to, to focus in on but obviously if you guys are watching this it's probably because you have a similar issue that you're maybe researching into tear trough fillers as an option for them. It's still a tiny bit of swelling I think on this side but I, I think this side's pretty, pretty much done. So you can see because I am in this really unflattering lighting like I've still got a bit of a trough and I think I probably will get a top up. Um, but it's just made such a difference already. I am so, so pleased. Hello, so it is two weeks today since I had the filler. Um, so she did say that the full result would be in three weeks time, so we've got one more check-in to go, but this is two weeks since having it. Um, I've got absolutely no makeup on. I put my moisturiser on, but I haven't even put SPF on or anything yet, so this is like completely bare face. So that is what it is looking like. So I do still have a trough, which I I feel like I've said a million times, like we knew that was going to be the case. Um, but I just feel it looks so much better than it did. I am so, so pleased with it. Like, I feel like before my eyes were like, my under eyes were like down here and along here. And I feel like it's just sort of lifted it and pulled it into here. So I feel like I would still be interested in getting more at some point, but I already feel it's so much better. It's not like I'm going to be like February 1st through that door when she said, you know, wait two months. Like, but I do feel probably before my birthday next year, I'll maybe get it topped up. My birthday is in July. Um, so maybe like sort of May, June time, I'll maybe look to get a little bit more, but I feel like it's, <sighs> Like, I think the thing for me is that I've just felt particularly over the past year. This has gone from being something that I am aware of, but like, would like to change it, but not absolutely consumed by it, to like, like, I feel like in the last year, my skin really started to age in a way that it hasn't, which makes sense because I was leaving my 20s and, you know, about to turn 30, so it, it kind of makes sense that this is obviously the age my skin is going to start aging at but I just felt like they got so so bad in the last year I felt like my under I just always looked tired and even when I had makeup on I felt like the hollow itself was getting deeper and deeper and deeper and um, so I'm really really pleased I just I feel like it just I look so much more awake so much less haggard as much as that's not a word I like to think is how I looked, but that's how I felt that I looked. Um, no matter, you know, how much sleep I got, no matter what I did makeup wise, 
I just was always focused on my under eyes um, and I, I do I just feel they look so so much better I feel like how they look now is maybe how they looked like when I was in like my mid to early 20s so it is still there and even then that it was something I was aware of but it wasn't like it's been the last year so I am absolutely thrilled so I will do another check in because she did say three weeks is the the kind of final result so I will speak to you again next week just to get that overall final this is the the end result but I am so so pleased um so yeah that's my week two check in it is now at the three week mark so this is my sort of final result so this is me with no makeup on and um, this is how my tear troughs are looking within my face in general so there's still definitely a dip but I am so so happy overall I'm quite glad that I've done this because I think as well this is quite a realistic result to share with you to show you what one round of filler can achieve. If you look at celebrities who have tear troughs, there's quite a few, like Olivia Palermo um, has quite deep tear troughs, Jenna Coleman, Blake Lively, there's quite a few who do have this eye shape. But one of the celebrities that if you are googling like tear trough fillers before and afters, who comes up quite a lot is Ariana Grande. Um, so I don't know if she's ever said that she's had them or not, but you know, you can google you can see the before and the after and it goes from being this kind of shape to being you know completely as if there's nothing no kind of indent under her eyes and i think like maybe when you're googling tear trough fillers you think that's what's going to happen in one treatment so i'm quite glad that i've done this because i feel like this is a huge improvement and i'm really really happy but i think it's also a realistic um kind of idea of what you're going to achieve with one treatment. I feel at this point just exactly like I felt at the last point I probably will get more filler and um, so she did say you have to wait two months before you go in with any more. I don't know the reason for that but that is what I was told and I'm perfectly happy to abide by that and as I said it's not going to be like February 1st I'm there battering the door down wanting more. It's not like that at all but I do probably think I'll get it topped up. Um, and she did say I had very, very deep tear troughs to start with. I'm going to stop talking, I'm going to give you some close-ups so that you can see some before and afters. Then I'm going to get ready, put some makeup on and film the sort of general overview of the procedure and stuff. So let's do that. I feel like really what most people want to see is sort of before and after, how long did the results take to kick in etc. So you've probably got most of the information that you really want um, from this video already but I did think we would just do a sort of general round up at the end. The general procedure, as you saw in the, the live, there is an injection made in your cheek. Now that was quite painful. Not absolutely unbearable and it's quick and once it's done it's done. Um, but Again, if you watch that section, so it's like a cannula that goes up and then delivers the product to below your eyes. So that hole, that injection in your cheek has to create a reasonable size of hole to allow the cannula to get up there. It's not the smallest of needles. I've never had a tattoo or anything to be able to compare it to that, but it was a much more painful injection than the likes of like a medical injection for example that was the most painful bit once the actual once it got to the actual bit where they were filling my under eyes i could feel it and it was a bit strange but i wouldn't say it was painful 
certainly not painful at all on the first eye. On the second eye, I did feel I could feel it a little bit more and it was a little bit uncomfortable, but I still wouldn't go as far as painful. So I don't think it's a painful procedure. The only painful bit is the injection right at the start and that's over with within seconds. So I don't think it's particularly painful. As I said at the start of the treatment section, it's the sort of procedure if you don't like needles or blood, you'd actually be okay with because you look up whilst it's going in. So you will you will feel it, but you don't necessarily have to see any kind of needle, any kind of injection, any kind of blood. You could definitely say to the person who's doing it, like, just don't let me see it and it would be fine. You could definitely avoid it because you are looking up the way the entire time you're not seeing your own face. So I do think it's a pretty good one if you're somebody who doesn't like needles, you can definitely cope with it. As I said in my check-ins, I do think I'll go for a top-up. I don't know the medical reasons, but I was told that after you have it, you have to wait two months before you can get any more filler put in. As I say, I don't know what the reasons are, but I'm perfectly happy to take the advice of the nurse who was my practitioner. How long it'll last then depends on how much filler you need. So if you're somebody like me who has gone for one and thought, I like this, but I feel like I could still improve this further and I'm probably going to go back for a top up. And um, that's obviously more filler that then needs to be re-topped up more regularly. But she did say that the average, if you're somebody who just goes in, gets it done, and that's, you're quite happy with it, is about a year. When I researched into it, pretty much everybody said the same thing, is that you generally get about a year out of your tear trough filler and then you would need it topped up. It is an average, it's a give or take, it's all to do with individual bodies will metabolise the product at different rates. So obviously there is absolutely no guarantee that they can give you that says yes it will definitely last for a year but apparently a year is the average. In terms of the filler, again I don't know if this would vary from practitioner to practitioner but it is a hyaluronic acid filler so it's a very very sort of liquidy filler. It attracts water in your body and I did say in my sort of immediate after check-in that she did warn me that sometimes it can look worse before it looks better because the way that that works is that it attracts water in your body. So sometimes like certain bits of it can swell up and it can almost go bumpy under your eyes. I didn't experience that at all. Um, it, it never felt or looked bumpy to me. But in terms of the type of filler, what she said to me is if you put a blob of like the under eye filler that you use on the table, it would flatten out and it would kind of liquefy. Whereas if you were to put a blob of the type of filler used in a lip injection, it would stay in the blob that you've put it in because it's a much sort of firmer type of filler. I've never had lip injections. I, I don't know how they kind of feel or anything like that, but it's not a firm filler. Like my under eyes just feel exactly like they did before. It doesn't feel like I get any kind of lumps or like I sort of shielded anything under my eyes. Like I couldn't tell you anything was in there if I didn't know that there was a visual difference that tells me there's something in there. And the last thing that I'm going to cover off is my specific treatment. So I saw Lucy MacArthur, she is a registered nurse. I will link her Instagram up down below, but she did say she's getting married early in 2022. Her new name will be Lucy Campbell and she is going to change her business name as well. So depending on when you are watching this, it may well be Lucy Campbell. She works between Dundee and Glasgow, but where she works in Glasgow is actually Paisley. So for me, I had to get into Glasgow and then get from Glasgow to Paisley. So it is that tiny bit further out. It's just something to be aware of. The reason I went for Lucy is that there was someone else who I was going to go with, but I don't know anybody in real life who has had this treatment. I saw one of my friends talking about getting her lips done, so I messaged her, and but she really recommended Lucy who does um, her Botox and her lip filler quite regularly. So that was why, although I couldn't find anybody who had had tear trough treatment done, I went with Lucy, it was just that it was that personal recommendation and I'm really, really pleased overall. You know, I, I don't think I could have asked for any more. The other person that I was looking at was more expensive, but I think that's probably reflective of the location of the other person. They were a bit more central, and so obviously their rent, etc., will be higher. I'm perfectly happy to make that journey to Paisley again for a top up with Lucy. So yeah, I would, if you're in the, the Dundee or Glasgow area slash Paisley area, I went to Lucy and I would, 
absolutely have no problems recommending her. I am very, very happy. She is a registered nurse, I think I said that already. I spoke to her about a couple of other things that I am not, I've not signed up for anything else, but I did speak to her about a few things I'm interested in. And, you know, she was really, really thorough and she gave me some very honest advice, which I really, really appreciated. You know, there was something I was asking about and she was like, no, I don't do it because I don't like the, the outcome of that. And, you know, it's just my professional kind of stance is that I'm not going to do it kind of thing, um, which I really, really respected. And something else that I was asking about that she doesn't do it, she was explaining the reason that she doesn't do it is because there's like a vein that goes through this certain part of your face that you know basically if anything went wrong you'd end up blind so you know she was very like she knew her stuff and she the things that I was asking about she could have probably quite happily said yeah yeah I'll charge you whatever for that like let's book in um, but she was very professional and I really really respected that I have looked at other places that are offering these things and from now knowing what she told me about those things I've been like all right okay we're not going to do that and it is just worth noting as well with under eye filler she again explained to me that there is a vein and I'm, I've now kind of forgotten this bit but it goes kind of like here so you have to be very very careful that's why they don't like inject straight into the the area is they do do the the cannula um approach is because of the vein that if you make a mistake you can end up blinding somebody. Please do always go to somebody who is medically qualified. I know with Botox and filler and things, you can do certain courses to get qualified and whatever. At the end of the day, it's not just your face aesthetically, it's your health, etc. So my personal stance is I would only go to a medically qualified person. Um, and yeah, if you're in the area, I really recommend Lucy. And that's probably quite niche because I don't know how many people will be looking for tear trough fillers in the Glasgow or Dundee areas but I will link Lucy up down below if you are. And I think that's everything that I was going to cover off in this video so I hope it's been helpful. I hope it gives you like an idea of the sort of what one treatment can you know actually achieve in terms of a realistic result. I am really really pleased but I definitely know that I want a little bit more. I hope it's been helpful. If you've got any further questions, leave them down below. Thank you very much for watching this video and if you're watching this the day that it goes live, I am doing Vlogmas. I did decide to spare you the Vlogmas intro because I think this is the sort of video that people will probably find well into the future as they are looking for info on this treatment rather than watching live in December. But if you are watching live in December, I will see you tomorrow with another vlog in this video. Bye.